Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we begin by actually sending that science to the science lab thanks to the commenters who mentioned how to do this so it seems like I click data and I click this flag the file for analysis in laboratory icon and then they'll send these over to the lab and well, that's just 147 bits Hopefully you'll get more than that. Or maybe that's what's actually being generated. Um, I would like megabits, thank you. But let's see. Lab material study. So the lab is actually working on the material study, I think it says. Okay, well, they're jumping on it. It's green. And power, power seems to be all right in the daylight side. Let me just see how much consumption there is at night because the science lab does consume power. We're not oriented perfectly to the sun. And our orbital period is 57 minutes, so that means 28 minutes or so in the dark. So we'll see if we have enough capacity. Wow. Wait, that's during time warp. Still pretty wow. Uh, you talk about, let's say, just to make the math simpler, 5 units per second. And in total... We're talking about 3,600 seconds per hour, so that's 18,000 per hour, but we're not in the dark for an hour, so it should be all right. So let's time warp on that assumption and see if uh, I'm correct. That's a pretty big mountain right there. I didn't think they were that big on Minmus. So yeah, we will have to do this. Yep, everything is all right. So... Yep, that should be balanced and maybe we'll get some science of it. I don't know exactly how it works, obviously, with uh, Kerbalism, but we shall see. I mean, uh, looks like it's being flagged for transmission already. And we're in the kilobytes uh, kilobits now. Okay. All right. So uh, in other news, uh, someone suggested the restock mod. And initially, I wasn't too enthusiastic about that because... You know, I've used Venstock revamp and I wasn't thrilled by that. I mean, it looks makes the models look better, but it's uh, somewhat of a hassle when you actually uh, dig into the mod. But the restock mod does look pretty good. I watched a video by Shadow Zone, and uh, he highlighted the detail on the parts, and I do like the detail on the parts, so maybe I'll give it a go. Uh, but uh, not just yet. I'll wait on that. And there's probably other mods that need to be added too, of course. But still, I'm uh, I'm making a list and checking it twice. So now we sent a mission over to Duna, and that was the Ike station that we've got there. But we are still sort of in the Duna window, and I wanted to send over a scanner probe to scan for ore around Ike. So yeah, let's get down to launching that, and then ultimately I want to bring our Kerbal back from Eve. Now, before I do all that, let me check the supplies on here to make sure that we're not going to run out of anything. And if we see supplies, we see three years all around. Ammonia is only 251 days, but that's not critical. And probably that's lying to me anyway. Um, Sherber and Bob have 30% radiation. Def in 33. Jessely, I thought some of these were new to this. Now, uh, somebody proposed that the reason that our Kerbals got some, so much radiation is because they were in a location without shielding. Well, let's make sure we put them in a location with shielding. This has full shielding in it, the mobile processing lab. So, in theory, our scientists who are in there should not be getting any, any more than the minimum, right? That's, that's going to be the minimum, whatever it is. And I'm pretty sure that it doesn't uh, that uh, regardless of your distance from the sun, you get the same radiation. Uh, so that's that's an issue. And if you have full shielding, considering that it's advertised as 22 millimeters of lead, I I think that that's pretty hefty. And we should uh, go over that in the VAB and see how heavy that really is, how heavy the shielding really is. But okay, let me uh, transfer Jessely out of this pot, which is only half protected, into... Can we transfer her over there? Crew transfer interrupted. Uh, Jessely, 
might actually be in here. Yeah, Jessely is in there. It's always so confusing. Anyway, and that has full shielding, so that's the best we can get. All right, uh, so before we launch to do the mission, let's go to the VAB and take a look at shielding. Okay, so this is the command pod, obviously, the Mark 1-3 command pod, and by default, its mass is 2.759 tons. Now I'm gonna put all the shielding on, and it is 4.385 tons. Now that's an increase of ooh, about 60%, I think, uh, just off the top of my head. And that's pretty heavy when you increase the mass of a pod by 60%. Uh, I would expect that that would be able to block things pretty darn well if that's just the shielding. You know, uh, other forms of radiation shielding are like passing water through the hull, which would probably be lighter than 20 t the 20 millimeters thick lead. But yeah, um, and I'm, I'm thinking about this in terms of, let's say we scale this up to realism overhaul sizes. Well, realism, realism overhaul sizes means that uh, this pod will be scaled up uh, in length by 1.6 times. And that means in area, surface area, by 2.56 times. Which means that you take the mass of this and multiply it by 2.56. Which means this would be more than a 10 ton pod. Now, but by default, without the shielding, uh, 2.56 times that will probably be uh, 6 point uh, something something. <laughs> Six, uh, I'm just doing this off the, off the top of my head. 6 point something something, which is about the same as an Apollo command module, and it'd be about the same size. And if you dump the shielding, you talk about 60% on top of the normal Apollo command module mass. So that's hefty. And if we do that, if we decide to put that kind of protection on our pods, uh, I would like it to be very decisive in terms of keeping our Kerbals safe. You saw those Kerbals on Euphrates Station. They're sitting there, you know, getting 30% of their maximum dose of radiation. But hopefully we can send people out to Mars and such, or in this case, Duna, and it's not going to kill them. But we'll have to see. So I'm thinking about that. And let's not talk about Jewel. That's a separate issue. If the radiation doesn't scale by distance, then Jewel is going to be a big problem. If it does scale by distance, then it's not so much of a problem. So we take a look here. Overall shielding 18.13. And the only shortfall there is because of the command module there attached to the station. The main station modules are all at 20. And uh, yeah, somehow Sherber, Jess Lee, Bob, and Deffen all have 30% radiation. And if we take a look, I guess, um, I don't know if we can see Valentina's right now. It doesn't show Valentina's here in the VAB, unfortunately. But she's the most experienced Kerbal, I believe. Anyway. Now let's launch that Duna mission so that I can get a scanner around Ike and we can hunt for ore. Well, we are getting a lot of data received, material study completed messages. Lots of those messages. Are we going to keep just constantly getting messages like that? Do I have to turn that off too? Because they're not going away. Anyway, we'll see. And yeah, all right, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. I mean, it says the Duna window is 22 days away, but we, we launched one just recently and it didn't seem to have a bad transfer time, so I think we can go. Now you can see that there's also a jewel window, but taking a look at our jewel probes that I already sent, you know, those four jewel missions there. Uh, they're not communicating very well back to Kerbin. And I guess we have to unlock the most powerful dishes, because they already have the, like, second most powerful dishes, basically. And I guess we need to unlock the rest of- ooh. Uh, unlock the even better ones, but that's gonna take 550 science. Well, no, uh, I think they're, they're not even in the next science that we want to unlock. So it's gonna be a while. I'm really slow at turning here. Fortunately, lots of Delta V. 
So yeah, I, I don't think we can launch something to Jewel on this window. I'll just get rid of it for now. Okay, yeah, okay, those messages are really irritating me. Um, how do we stop this? This critical failure is apparently... Oh, well, there's that reaction wheel. Um, config. Um, battery, supply, signal, reliability, storm, script. Maybe it's script? It doesn't say science. Maybe if I go to the science lab, I can turn it off. Okay, upper stage and fairing set. Oops, confetti. So it's a cheetah, and then we have, uh, well, well, let's wait until space to deploy everything. It's just a scanner. We don't have other science on here. I didn't want to overburden it. It's a one-trick pony, if you will. I thought about sending a Kerbal over to Duna, but I think we'll wait until the Ike station is in place. It will be a backup location just in case the mission needs help. And I say Ike Station, but it might end up just being around Duna. We'll see. We have the contract for Duna after all. Okay, we are in space. Let's just deploy everything. It was a tight fit between uh, these antennae and the scanner. But hopefully I got that right. I hope I have enough electric charge when it's doing the main scan. We will see. Obviously we need to put this into a polar orbit around Duna. Well, Ike. I don't know whether I'm scanning Duna or Ike first. We'll see. I want to scan both, of course. And we have 5,900 meters per second right now. 1,000 needed to transfer over to Duna after we get into orbit. Let me not forget getting into orbit this time. Okay, a bit lopsided, but it'll be good enough. Let's see. The thing is, it doesn't seem like antennae are additive. In other words, putting more than one on doesn't help with our communication. The missions that only had one antenna seem to be doing just as badly, or just as well, as the ones that have multiple antennae, as far as the slot that are going over to Jewel. Right? So they're around here-ish and they're down to below 20 percent connectivity and that's why i'm not thinking i can launch more jewel missions yep it's gonna be tough and probably i mean if we lose all those missions it's gonna be bad but anyway focusing on duna right now it's a mere 1073 kilometer uh meters per second and seems like a good encounter Looks like it's nighttime power consumption is 0.5 per second. That's a bit rough. But we'll probably be putting it high enough around Duna that that's not going to matter. And uh, if that's the power draw, uh, each of these can supply 1.6. So even at the uh, reduced power availability at Duna, it should be fine. Let's go. Uh, more or less. Okay, so once we get there, we're going to pull it in with a very minor burn. And I'll have to double check what the correct altitude for scanning is. And I guess we'll start with Duna. Why not? And then make orbit. And it's not going to cost a whole lot to do both of these burns, so. We'll have plenty to head on over to Ike to do the scanning there. And we have the timing for that. So, let's get that alarm in. And we've got an Ike scanner on its way. Let's make sure the, del uh, the um, sunlight is good. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so I think... I think we should time warp and get our Kerbal back from Eve. And of course, first we have to rescue that Kerbal on the surface of Gilly. But we'll get closer to that transfer window first. And since we're breaking orbit out of Gilly, we need probably a month. Uh, so that once we get into Eve orbit, we can time the return properly. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, we'll be short of a month and then we'll handle that rescue operation. Poor little Kerbal's been waiting on the surface of Gilly for ages, just looking at up at the potential rescue vessel every time it passes over very, very, very slowly. Okay, we've time warped a bit and here we are with Bill and we need to fix the treadmill first. So there were other errors, but they were on the jewel probes, so we can't do anything about those. Uh, but there is a treadmill malfunction. I guess we have to actually EVA Bill in order to. Okay. All right, repair treadmill. All right, well, that's done. Why is Bill spinning all over the place? Honestly. Oh, right. Bill might be a little bit weird, right? He's supposed to be maybe not in his best frame of mind. Does that cause a Kerbal to spin around a whole lot? I don't know. Bill looks really big compared to the size of the pod. I guess he'll fit. Okay. Yeah, how is Bill these days? 28% stress, 35% radiation. And yeah, Bill has full radiation shielding on everything, by the way. So, yeah. Okay, well, we have to find the Kerbal we need to rescue on the surface of Gilly. I guess we can just reverse our orbit and go down now. Or we can come back around That'll be cheaper in Delta V. And maybe now, since we'll need to bring all of this back after all, we need to make, uh, because Romar can't fit into that command pod, we need to make sure that all of this gets into orbit around Kerbin again, and then rescue Rom Romar once we get into orbit around Kerbin. So maybe we should be sparing about our Delta V usage. Why is the oxygen depleting so much? Um, uh, is stuff rebalancing? Is that why? Or do we have like a leak? One hour and 40 minutes of oxygen? What the heck? Okay, there's, there's nothing else busted around here. Why? Why do we only have one hour and 40 minutes of oxygen? Does it say anything about a leak? Wait, they went up now. Or maybe it's because the suit is replenishing? The EVA suit? I don't know. I mean, 2.7 per second is pretty bad. I think it might be prudent for me to go away from the vessel and come back, just in case. I don't know if I'm just missing something, but definitely two hours of oxygen is going to kill somebody. Mm. Nope, it's back to just being two hours. Hold on. Now take a look at this. When I go to the tracking station and take a look at Gilly Mission 1, it says one year and 97 days for Gilly Mission 1. And really it should be more than that, but we lost some just by looking at the mission while it was down to two hours, right? And so when we fo uh, go to Gilly Mission 1, then it switches back to two hours. I'm going to restart the game. <laughs> I mean, ju just in case that helps. Otherwise, we're doomed, right? I mean, I don't know why we're doomed. Um, there's, there's, let me just check message log and everything. Let's take a look. Treadmill repaired. Uh, problem with engine on dual relay, dual orbital treadmill on Gelly Mission 1. You know, lots and lots of data received. I, I There's been no message about any sort of leak or any sort of problem with the oxygen system on our mission around Gilly. So yeah, let me just restart the game and see if that helps. Okay, we are here after the restart. And once again, the oxygen here says one year and 97 days. And I'm going to go to, uh, not to Euphrates Station, to Gilly Mission 1 and see what the situation is. And one year, 97 days, and, and holding. Okay, well, we had, I mean, it was it's obvious we had an issue there. And the oxygen was draining too quickly. And we probably lost quite a chunk of oxygen right there when it was losing two a second. 
Hmm. But anyway, uh, I guess we'll proceed at this point with uh, what we were trying to do. I swear, though, if it ultimately comes down to a few hundred units of oxygen, I'm just going to add them back in, okay? Okay, we're lined up again, and we're going to try and grab real more. I am sort of cognizant of the fact that once we get him, the clock is ticking for getting back. And we need to have a transfer back of about 180 days max. So that's going to be a thing. Now, we've got 2,000 meters per second to do that, but we also need to reserve enough fuel to capture into orbit around Kerbin afterwards. Okay, so it's an interesting order we've got here. So is Romar on this side of the hill or on the opposite side of the hill? I can't really tell. Hmm. Odd... Z fighting going on right at the scene between this tank and that tank. That's annoying. Honest, honestly, we could just hover above the surface and let Romar rendezvous with us. I think maybe that's, that's probably for the best. Let's just stop our descent. Start ascending. Switch to Romar. Romar is outside of the pod even. Okay. Right. Oh, I forgot. Uh, it will descend, of course. There is some gravity. Okay, roll more. You have to get in before it hits the ground. Come on. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Very Kerbal of you, Romar. Very Kerbal. Oh well, it hit the ground. Get in, get in, get in, get in. Grab. Board. Okay, uh, let's go. Up. <laughs> oh, what a, what a, what a rescue. Yep, that's what I meant. What a rescue. Okay, we've made orbit, but it's not a great orbit. And I'd like to break orbit now. I think either way is fine at the end of the day. And the sooner we get out of here, the better, because time warp restrictions are pretty bad. So let's check our life support. Um, oxygen's depleting fast again. It is the EVA, isn't it? But I don't like that. And we're down to 4 hours and 55, 56. It's increasing. Well, it stopped increasing. Water's perpetual now for some reason. Uh, but yeah, 4 hours is obviously not going to be good enough. Well, um, let me see what happens if I restart the game again. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to do about this. I certainly can't allow it to deplete in four hours. Well, this time checking in here, the supplies are only 260 days of oxygen because we've got two Kerbals in, but let's make sure that's consistent when we visit the mission. And it occurs to me, even if it's trying to replenish the EVA oxygen, uh, it shouldn't deplete that fast. One hour now. Uh, after restarting the game. And it's, oh, now it's 4 hours and 51 minutes. I don't know. So that didn't stop. Maybe it's just replenishing the EVA oxygen. But, well, no, it's going down faster now. I just, I don't understand why water is perpetual either, by the way. Um, one of the many weird factors. I mean, we do have a water recycler, but... Sure doesn't read as perpetual when we are in the tracking station. What are we going to do? Well, let me try and bring them out of Gilly orbit anyway. Uh, well, it's got that, that, that's got to take 56 minutes. We've only got four hours. And it's going down really fast. Gosh darn it. Tracking station. Mm. Here it says 3 hours and 52 minutes as well. 
Okay, we restart again, and now we're down to 251 days there. What happens when we actually visit the mission is the question. So back to the mission again. Here it still says 251 days, though we should have much more than that, of course. I mean, 290 something. Let me quickly take a look at the safe, the persistent file, and see if I can see what's going on. If I can't, I will have to end the episode. Yeah, unfortunately not. I couldn't see anything in the persistent file to tell me what might be going on here and why we have this leak. I mean, you could say it's replenishing the oxygen after the Kerbal went through the airlock and that might be the problem, but it's taking a lot more than I think it ought to for that purpose and it's severely diminishing our ability to bring these guys back home safely. Um, yeah, and obviously just exiting the save and coming back in has not helped the situation. Uh, let me just visit it one more time. I mean, I'll, I'll bring it outside a Gilly SOI first, and if I have to add the oxygen back in, I will. And what I do is add it at the same level as the food because I'm reasonably sure I put more oxygen than the food in. But I just want to see what happens through this. As you can see, it's depleting faster rather than slower. The rate of depletion is increasing. Okay, um, other than that, electric charge is fine. Everything else seems to be alright. Nitrogen's actually improving for some reason. I don't know why, but, yep, I uh, can't really speculate. Okay, and, you know, there's no other warning here. So, uh, before they completely run out, let me get Megjeb to plot that course back home and see if that can be done in good time, because we do have a time limit on that too, not that. This is 1000, these are better. I mean, ASAP create node. That's 200 days. No, I want less time. Transit duration, 116 days. That sounds a little bit better. So that gets us back in 147 days total, which would be well under the... If, if we add 277 days of oxygen, it'd be well under uh, our oxygen depletion and let's see how much it would take to capture around Kerbin given this course and so another 717 meters per second which means that we have enough not a whole lot extra but we would have enough so that's one thing checked out and now we have to worry about this auction. So sorry about the short episode, but you can see the problem here. And I need suggestions. I can manually add oxygen back in, but uh, I'm going to have to keep doing that every few hours at this rate unless I can stop it from depleting. Of course, if it uh, restores, like when I restart and it uh, says 200 days, as long as we don't look at them, I guess we, it might be alright. But I'm not sure. We've got this weird leak. Oh well, anyway, so with that being the situation, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.